Good evening and welcome to PJTN Online. I am your host, Laurie Cardoza-Moore, and I want to welcome you back again. I want to thank those of you who were with us last week who attended the National Religious Broadcasters Convention with us. And we had, as you saw, an exciting time. It was an exciting event. We had a lot of a lot of great responses from our program. And so I'm looking forward to sharing some of those responses with you this evening. So tonight, as we get started, um, I want to just remind you that if you are not signed up at pjtn.org, I want to encourage you to join us, to sign up, and become one of our PJTN watchmen. For only $20 a month, you can help support programs like this one and the documentaries as well as all the programs that we produce. Um, I also want to encourage you to, if you haven't yet, to, to follow us on Facebook, like us on Twitter, and on Instagram. And also, you can visit our YouTube pages, PJTN, on YouTube and Vimeo, so you can catch some more of our programming there as well. Um, for those of you who are new to our program tonight and to proclaiming justice to the nations, our mission is to educate Christians about their biblical responsibility to stand with our Jewish brethren and defend the state of Israel against the rise of global anti-Semitism. We accomplish that mission by producing award-winning programs and documentary films in order to educate Christians around the globe. As a result of our, our influence at the National Religious Broadcasters Convention, we, are now, we now have 21 media partners that are around the globe. Basically, we are able to reach Christians, Jews, and people of conscience who are interested in standing against anti-Semitism in 200 nations, reaching 2.6 billion viewers through all of our program and our media partners. And of course, um, for those of you who are tuned in tonight and you were with us at the NRB, you got to see some of our wonderful partners to hear some of their own personal testimonies of of their listeners, their viewers, and the comments, the feedback that they receive. Um, I also just want to remind you our goal for this year, membership drive, is 5,000 new PJTN watchmen. Again, for just $20 a month, you can be a PJTN watchman and help us put more programs like this on the air. So those of you who are already supporting us, God bless you. Thank you for helping us. Um, it's a tremendous honor and a blessing to be able to partner together to get this message around the globe. I also want to remind you that the Israel Rising um, last week, last week, the NRB interviewed Doug Hershey and uh, Doug has just published a brand new book called Israel Rising. It's a wonderful world. Um, we're offering this to our PJT um, donors for just $50. We will send you this beautiful um, book and um, autographed by the author. And it's, it, there's over um, 200 pictures of Israel dating back to as far as, or as early as 1844. And even some modern day, even um, pictures of, of what the, the area of Israel, the pictures that were taken way back um, when, over 100 years ago, there are now new modern pictures. Doug hired a photographer to travel with him around the country and to take pictures of those same spots, those same locations where he was given pictures that are over 100 years old. And it's incredible. It's an incredible testimony to um, God to fulfill the mission of what he said he would do. He would bring Israel back into that land. And when Israel returned, the land would respond. So for just $50, a gift of $50, if you go to our website, we will send you this beautiful um, book and pictorial that you can share with, fam with family and friends. And remember, this book will also make a great gift for someone. So I want to encourage you to, to join us with that and support, again, all the funding goes to help support our mission at PJTN. Um, moving on, um, as you all know, last week, Reverend Billy Graham passed away. They buried him in North Carolina. They had their services actually um, on 
believe it was Wednesday last week during the NRB, and uh, there was such a, a uh, um, an, an exciting time at NRB because Billy Graham is one of the patriarchs within the Christian faith, and I learned something about Billy Graham that I did not know. That was his love for Israel and for the Jewish people, and he was Billy Graham. Reverend Billy Graham was um, influenced Pastor Peggy's life, um, Pastor Falwell's life, and and Pat Robertson's life as well. And he was really um, he can be attributed to modern day. Zionism. He loved the Jewish people. He um, believed and taught that God has a, has a covenant, has made a covenant with Israel that's still intact. And so um, we were, I was pleasantly, I knew that he had to be um, supportive of Israel. I knew he had to have a love for the Jewish people, but I didn't know to what extent. So anyhow, so we did, we, we lost a great patriarch, and of course we have big shoes to fill. Um, I also want to um, just highlight during our NRB convention last week, we heard a lot, of, a lot from the experts, not just in media, but also Christian leaders, talked about um, the dire straits that the church is in right now. How um, the numbers of the church, members of congregations, are dwindling even here in the West, in the United States of America. And many of these leaders were a bit stunned um, and perplexed by these numbers. But I had mentioned during our main event that I, th I found it interesting that many, many Christians are starting to leave the institutional Christian church. They're leaving for many reasons, but um, primarily a lot of Christians do not feel the relevancy of the congregation. They don't feel like their personal lives are being affected or touched in any um, uh, significant way. And so they're leaving. And we've also seen with many studies uh, or polls, like through Barna, that there is a growing segment of the Christian population that is actually going into home fellowships, uh, much like what we do in Franklin, Tennessee. We have a home fellowship where our congregation comes together um, as a community to share a meal and to study God's word. And it's, um, this seems to be a growing trend where people are feeling like they're more connected to God, that they're, instead of becoming part of a program or helping to initiate somebody else's program, um, they feel like um, they're, they're learning more personally in their own spiritual walk, their own personal lives with the Lord, which has been very exciting. Another thing that I had mentioned um, is, though, we see the modern-day Christianity and the mainline denominations, and even some evangelical denominations, um, Christians are leaving these churches for whatever reason. We see a growing movement of Christians who are engaged in the roots. Um, of course, we teach the Hebrew roots of the Christian faith, not just here through people in online or through our documentaries and our programs, but we also teach in small group settings. And I think there, there's something about this movement I was just reading earlier that several Christian leaders talked about um, this Hebrew movement is the new great awakening where Christians are beginning to reconnect back to the Hebrew roots of faith, connecting to the faith of Yeshua, of Jesus Christ. This is the faith that he kept to. Um, he was a faithful Jew. He kept the, the commandments of the Lord. He um, followed the Torah. He studied the Torah. He went to synagogue. Um, so these are these were not um, strange things to, um, to to Yeshua and to his family or to the Jews and Israelites of that day. But it is a foreign thing to us. And it even says, actually, in the Bible, um, the Bible actually talks about that we would call these things foreign that the Gentiles, and here, of course, we are living in that day. This is a significant time in history, ladies and gentlemen, and the reason why we teach the Hebrew roots, the reason why we reach out to Christians and teach them the Bible, teach them what the Word of God says about Israel and about the Jewish people, we do that because we know that therein lies the truth. Um, God is the same God yesterday, today, and forevermore. 
And it's important that we study his word because if we know his word, then we will know what position we should be taking as it applies to Israel and as it applies to our Jewish brethren. So um, so it was a, a sobering convention last week, but it was also one of great encouragement for me to hear this, the testimonies of the people who are being impacted by our programming all over the world. Just this past um, week, I received an email from a gentleman from the United Kingdom who wrote to um, the Prime Minister of the UK and encouraged her to condemn this movement of anti-Semitism that is so pervasive um, within the UK. And, you know, this again is an example of a PJT watchman. You know, if we educate and mobilize Christians around the world, we may be based in Franklin, Tennessee, in the United States of America, but Christians are around the globe. Christians live in communities all over the world, and we can all make a difference. We can all have a, an impact in our communities, whether it's looking at our children's textbooks, because, you know, we've seen the issue with textbooks, the curriculum that is anti-Semitic and it's anti-American, it's anti-Judeo-Christian, it's anti-West, it's anti the values, the Judeo-Christian values that Western civilization was founded upon, and especially this nation, the United States of America. So it's important that we study these things, that we, we are grounded in the Word of God, so that when we face these, these questionable activities that are going on in our community, we know what's right, and we know what's wrong, and we have been given a voice to speak out. And remember, you know, God did not bring us into the world. Um, he didn't breathe life into our bodies and, and place our souls within our physical being 100 years ago, 500 years ago, even 1,000 years ago. He did it today. And as we see, as we witness this Hebrew, Hebraic great awakening happening among Christians who are seeking God, these are not Christians who are, you know, off on some tangent. These are Christians who have are who felt like they were missing something in the church, that something wasn't being there was some strange connection. Now I've seen and I've spoken with many Christians who will um, think that they're just supposed to go back to Catholicism or to the Greek Orthodox um, church. But I say to them, go further. Don't stop there. Because we do not support the root. Christians, the church, does not support the root. The root supports us, as Paul said in Romans. So it's critically important, again, we know our Bible, we study our Bible, we pray, we rely on the Holy Spirit, we rely on the Lord to give us wisdom and understanding. And how do we know? How do we know that what we think God is speaking to us is accurate? Well, the way you know, ladies and gentlemen, is when you study the Bible, you'll find those truths communicated in the text of Scripture. Anything that you, know, you believe or you think, you have to understand in the Bible. It has to be somewhere in the Scriptures to be able to build or make a case upon it. You can't substantiate that position or that doctrine or that theology in, in the Bible, in the Word of God and especially in the Torah, then we have misunderstood or misinterpreted the scriptures. And we have done that. As Christians, we study Bibles that have been interpreted with, from a Greek or a Greco-Roman perspective as opposed to a Hebraic perspective. Um, I was reading a car, uh, an article earlier um, of a rabbi who was talking about how because of this, this Hebrew roots movement, he is being... Um, people, Gentiles, who are Christians who are coming to their to his services, and they're a small congregation, but people are calling, and people are asking if they can come to services. They want to understand the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob better. And this is happening all over the world, ladies and gentlemen. This isn't being done because it isn't happening because some preacher or minister is teaching it and telling people to go to the synagogue to study. No, these people are being drawn, and it's very similar to the first century of believers, the Gentile converts. 
in we we can look at Acts 15 and we can see how those those brand new Gentile converts were going into we told that um, Yaakov, Yeshua's mother um, told the leaders at the time because they, they didn't know what to do with all these Gentile converts um, who were coming to faith and um, Yaakov had the final word in Acts 15 he said tell the Gentile converts to do these four things he said to stay away from things strangled animals strangled stay away from blood stay away from um, idolatry and stay away from sexual immorality. Those are four Torah com- concepts. They were arguing over the issue of circumcision. What do we do with these people? But Yaakov had the final word. He didn't say no, they don't have to be circumcised. He told them four principles, four rules that they needed to apply in their lives. And then he said the most interesting thing. He said, because Moses is preached in the synagogue every Shabbat. What Yaakov was saying to the, the leaders of the, the followers of Yeshua was that if these people come and hear Moses taught every Shabbat, remember, the Sabbath is Saturday, sundown Friday to sundown Saturday. So we're going to be in the synagogue on Saturday studying the Torah of Moses. But what Yaakov was trying to say to them was, you're going to study the Torah of Moses. And when they get to those sections of that apply to them, because remember, the sections in the in the Torah portion that address the high priests don't apply to me because I'm a woman, or the, the portions of the Torah that apply to men, those portions don't apply to me um, because I'm a woman, and the and vice versa, the the portion of the Torah that talks about the women that doesn't apply to men. So again. We have to put everything back into the context that it's been taken out of, going back, you know, spiritually, culturally, to remember. Um, and what is so amazing is, as we study the prophets, God doesn't reveal anything except to the prophets that he's going to do. And he won't reveal something ahead of its time. And we are watching this movement now. You're contacting rabbis, they want to study in the synagogue, or they're studying on their own. These Christians, again, as I said, are not doing it because somebody's telling them. They're being called, they're being led, they recognize something's missing. And at PJTN, we're trying to be that bridge to help those of you who feel like, you know, I've been going to church all my life, but there seems like something is missing. What is it? And they're being drawn to the Hebrew roots. They're being drawn to Israel. They're being drawn to their Jewish brethren. There is a reason why that's happening. And there's a reason why the prophets are even talking about it now. That they're calling this Hebraic roots movement um, the new great awakening that is happening in our generation. And the reason why it's happening, it's because it's time. God is preparing this generation to understand that the Torah of Moses has never gone away. Yeshua even said, I did not come to abolish the Torah. I came to uphold it, to uphold something, not to abolish and do away with something. It's to uphold it, and he kept it faithfully. So we're going to kind of hit some of the news highlights, and then um, toward the end of the program, we are going to um, talk about, I'm going to take you through the Bible study. What is our biblical responsibility as parents, as grandparents, even great-grandparents, to teach the Torah of Moses to our children, to remind um, the children of the miracle God wrought for Israel, how he delivered Israel with a strong arm, um, from Egypt, those stories are commanded by God for us to teach to our children throughout their generations. And ladies and gentlemen, after we get through with this study, and it may take a couple of weeks to get through because there are a lot of scriptures, but it's important that we understand why are things like Parkland um, or the, the, the slaughter of all those children in that school and those adults in Parkland, Florida, why is that happening? Why are kids, why are our young people um, committing suicide? 
Um, why are they involved in all kinds of debauchery? Ladies and gentlemen, I can assure you the reason why is because we have not done a good job in training up our children and teaching them and telling them. And a great example I have to tell you is when I was at Florida University last week. And, um, it was my second trip there in one month. And some of the same students, but some new students came to our second program where we had an Arab Breaking the Silence tour. And we had invited um, Israeli Arabs who are both Jewish. Um, they are both uh, Muslim. They are Bedouin. They are Christian. Um, they are Druze. They were sharing their own personal stories of their, the country that they loved. They're a citizen of Israel. And they shared their, their each unique perspectives. Um, of their family and how their family had, you know, raised them. Their parents had taught them that they were to, to defend this country. But there's no other country in the Middle East, Arab country, where they can enjoy the freedoms and the rights that they have, both young men and women. Um, some of them serve in the military. Some do not. Um, some serve um, in the, because they can't, because of their faith, they can't serve in the military, so they serve the national government but they're all giving something back to the country. They all see the value of Israel because this is the place where they're able to live freely. And so these groups, of, this group of young men and women who are reserves in the Israeli Defense Forces and the IDF are touring the country. They're talking to young people on university campuses, um, communities all over the country, sharing their story, telling the truth, about what really is going on, not um, not sharing the lies and the false narrative that is being about Israel, even by supposed Christians who are in Bethlehem, who brought who have bought into the true Palestinian narrative that Israel is an occupier of their land. There is nothing in the Bible that says that the land of Canaan was given to Palestinian people. There is nothing that the prophets were told. The prophets there was going to be a, a time when God was going to give that land, take it from the Jewish people, take it from the nation of Israel, the 12 tribes, and give it to um, descendants of Esau or Edom or the Palestinians. There's nothing in there to substantiate that. But Christians have bought into that. Not just Christians in, not just Arab Christians, Christians around the world. Europe, and even here in the United States. So it's important that we expose those truths, we expose the lies and the, the untruths that they're communicating. And that's why we brought these kids. But when we when we, we had this conversation, when we showed our, our documentary film, um, Boycott This, again, you can order the documentaries on our uh, website, on our store page. But as we were sharing this information with these young people, and then having a conversation with the students, the audience, it was amazing to hear some of their own personal thoughts and things that they heard. But when the program was over, these kids stood around for 30, 40, 45 minutes afterwards just talking. And I was able to inspire these kids, to encourage them that they're not, they didn't decide to come to this, to be informed about this, this issue of police. They thought it was a great idea, although it was a great idea. But God wanted them in their heart to create that desire to make them take time out of their study. Because remember, in the spring is when exams are going on, midterms are happening, kids are studying, they've got tests up the wazoo. That's the busy schedule that these kids keep up. And I remember them that with everything that they've got going on, that they actually took the time. To, to, to come and participate and learn something that, you know, and hear from people, from people on the ground to hear their perspective. Because anti-Semitism is on the rise, and the only way we're going to stop it is if we, as Christians, Jews, people of conscience, decide to stand up and, and expose this hatred and condemn it. Um, I do want to just mention, if you haven't heard, 
Um, the Anti-Defamation League last has recently come out with a study indicating that um, there's an, an 86% increase in anti-Semitic incidents around the world. And here in the United States, there is they saw a 67% increase in anti-Semitic incidents just in the United States. But ladies and gentlemen, if you poll Americans, 70% of Americans support Israel. So where is the 67% increase coming from? Coming from our campuses. It's coming from our higher ed campuses. It's coming from our secondary school campuses. Why? Because professors that are promoting hatred on the college campuses are spewing these lies and this, this venom to students who fall prey to the lies and the propaganda and the propaganda. The only way we're going to be able to confront this issue is if we take these issues on head on on our college campuses. We need to be hosting speakers and screenings of our boycott documentary to have this conversation, to challenge the status quo, to, to challenge the disinformation campaign going on by professors. You know, I'm reading a book right now called um, Anti-Semitism in the Third Reich, and I wanted to understand how Hitler was able to come to power. And a lot of what we see going on in our um, country right now on our college campuses with our professors who are communicating false lies and propaganda to our children, our students in the universities. A lot of this was going on in, in Germany as well. But in Germany, the professors were delegitimizing hum the humanity of the Jews in their community. Today, it's not dehumanizing the Jews, although there are some professors who do teach that, but the majority of these professors are delegitimizing the modern state of Israel, the rebirth of the modern state of Israel, whom God had foretold would come about, would take place. One day he would bring Israel back into her land. He would gather her from the four corners of the earth. He said in his word that he would sift Israel through a sieve, but not one kernel of her would fall to the ground. He would regather her and bring her back. So it's so critically important that we educate ourselves about this growing threat and that we confront it in our communities. Even like even the textbooks, we should be we should all be looking at the textbooks being used in our children's schools, whether you have children in school or grandchildren, great grandchildren, or even if you don't have children in the public school system, even the private school system. If you are a tax-paying citizen, you have a vested interest in the well-being of this country and what our children are being taught. So I want to encourage you. And it is, um, I also just want to remind you as we're getting to we're halfway through the program, and I want to just talk about some of the scriptures. I want to do this, get into this study, because um, I do want to open up for Q&A, and I just want to remind you, if you do have a question, um, I am checking. The, um, the questions or comments that are coming in from our audience. Let me just move this. Just a bit, we'll refresh and see. There's Nancy Olson, just gave us a hello. Nancy, we're glad you're tuned in tonight. Let me just see if there's any more comments before we move on, because as we move on, I want to... Okay. Okay. All right. Here we are. So I'm looking. Let me check and see. All right. 
So yes, if you have any comments or um, if you have any questions, please feel free to send in your comments. All right. There we go. All right. So, yes, if you have any comments or um, if you have any questions, please feel free to send in your comments. There we go. Okay. All right. Yeah, very good. There we go. Okay. Okay. I think we've got the video issue taken care of. I noticed that there was a problem. All right. I'm putting okay. feedback. Okay. All right. I'm assuming that you all uh, just went ahead and muted this so that I'm back. We're having some audio difficulties. All right. So we're trying to work this out. All right. So while we're while I'm waiting for, okay, very good. So you guys can hear just fine. All right, so if you have your Bibles, and I would encourage you to grab a notepad and a pen, because I want you to write these scriptures down, because this is important. We're going to talk about what is our biblical responsibility to teach our children. Um, and it's amazing when we go back to the text of scripture, it's all right there. I want you to turn to me because our team um, this year at the National Religious Broadcasting Convention actually was out of Joel chapter 1, verse 3. So I want to make sure that you've got a Bible there. If you'll turn to the prophet Joel, he's considered one of the minor prophets, but I assure you that there's nothing minor about what he is, what the prophet Joel is talking about, because it is for this hour. For such a time as this. Zephaniah, one of my favorite. Joel is back there. Right after the book of Hosea, and if you turn to Joel chapter one verse three, I'm going to read it to you. It says, "I'm going to actually start in verse one. This is the word of the Lord that came to Joel, the son of Pethuel. Hear this, you elders, and give ear, all you inhabitants of the land. Has anything like this happened in your days?" For even in the days of your fathers, and they're talking, Joel's talking about the forefathers here. Verse 3, he says, tell your children, this is what the prophet Joel is saying, tell your children, let your children tell their children, and their children another generation. Well, what were they supposed to tell their children? What is it that's so important that we're and communicate and re-communicate to our children over and over. So I want you to turn back. We're going to go back to the book of Exodus. One of the ways that we study, now this is the prophets. The Bible consists, you'll hear me say over and over, that is the Bible is a book written to Israel, for Israel, about Israel. And um, the, the Torah, the first five books of Moses, is the foundation. That is where God spoke to Moses face to face. God spoke it, Moses wrote it, and, and the prophets um, affirm that, and so should the New Testament affirm it as well. If it doesn't, then we've either added, and there are texts of scripture that were added later on in the New Testament. So, you know, that's why it's so critically important that we study the Bible and we study it closely. I have a strong concordance. I look up word for word when I study a verse, you know, I don't pull it out of context. I put that verse in the context that it should be studied from. 
from a Hebraic perspective. And so if you have a strong concordance, you're, you're able to do that. You're able to look at every word and go look in a concordance to see what that word meant in the Hebrew. So it gives you a better understanding. So if you'll turn with me to, we're going to go back to the Torah, to Exodus, chapter 10, verse 2. And we're going to read. Now, we remember the book of Exodus is when God delivered the Israelites out of Egypt. So that's the context of what we're going to be reading. And this is Exodus chapter 10. I'm going to actually start in verse 1, if you'll follow along. And it says, Now the Lord said to Moses, Go in to Pharaoh, for I have hardened his heart and the hearts of his servants, that I may show the signs of mine before him, and that you may tell in the hearing of your son and your son's son, the mighty things I have done in Egypt, and my signs which I have done among them, that you may know that I am the Lord. Even back in Exodus, even back in the Torah, God told Moses, you are to tell these things, what I did, how I delivered, the signs that I wrought against Egypt, against Pharaoh, against the Egyptian army. These Story. You are to tell your children and your children's children about these signs. That why? Why was this so important for God? Why did he tell Moses to say it or tell it to his sons and his son's sons? He says right here that you may know that I am the Lord. We can't know, our children can't know. That God is the Lord, we don't tell our children about the miracles that God has brought. And this is what he did for Israel. I, re I This reminds me of the story of Joshua when he was getting ready to cross over. He crossed over the river Jordan, and they were getting ready to take Jericho. And they came upon Rahab. And remember what Rahab said. This was 40 plus years later that, that Joshua runs into Rahab, who's living in Jericho, and she, um, he, he tells her who he is, and she tells him that the, the leaders of the city are searching for them because the whole city is fearful. Why? Because they know the story of what is God has done. Even here, these aren't even Hebrews. These are, are people who live Bible people who live in this region, Jericho, and they had heard 40 years earlier about how Israel, God had delivered the Israelites miraculously from the mighty hand of Pharaoh. And she remembered that, and it was because of that that Rahab decided to, to disobey the, her, her ruling leaders of Jericho. She refused to tell the leaders where the Israelites despised her, and she helped them. And because she helped them, her family, we know the story, we can go back and read it, her family was spared. We have to teach these things to our children. There are many churches that do not even study the Old Testament. They think it's old. They think that the only Bible that we should be studying is the New Testament. The New Testament, it's like reading a thousand-page book and starting on page 800 of those thousand pages. You can, and then reading to the end. You cannot understand what you're reading at the end if you don't go back to the very beginning and read the foundation. Read about the promise. As I've said before, this book is a book written to Israel, for Israel, about Israel. And as Gentiles, who have embraced Yeshua as the Messiah, we are grafted in to this commonwealth. We are grafted in to this nation of Israel. Um, I want to also go, we're going to look at another scripture in Psalm 78. If you'll turn with me to the Psalms, Psalm 78, and we're going to read some incredible verses here. 
once again, what is our biblical responsibility as parents, as grandparents, as great-grandparents? What is our biblical responsibility with our children? If you turn to Psalm 78, starting in verse 1, it says, Give ear, O my people, to my law. This is the Lord speaking. Give ear to my people, O my people, to my law. And whenever, as you're studying the Bible, when you see the word law, scratch it out. Write Torah next to it. Because that is what the, the writers of this book are referring to. They're not referring to the United laws of the United States of America. They're not referring to our Constitution. They're not referring to the laws in our city. When you see the word law, it's Torah. When you see lawlessness, it's Torahlessness. That's the law. This is what is being spoken about. It goes on to say, incline your ears to the words of my mouth. I will open my mouth in a parable. I will utter dark sayings of old. Verse 3, which we have heard and known, and our fathers have told us. So this psalmist who is writing this down is acknowledging and recognizing what the forefathers had taught, that they had, that, uh, that they had heard and known, and our fathers have told us. Verse 4, we will not hide them from their children. Again, here it is. We're not to hide these things from our children. We're supposed to teach these things to our children. We're not supposed to, We're not supposed to leave it with their Sunday school teacher. This is our responsibility. In our home, on Shabbat, we have, we study, we come together as a family, and we study the Torah. We read the scriptures, and we teach these things to our children to remind them so that their faith, they will remain strong in their faith. Again, in verse 4, telling to the generation to come the praises of the Lord. So we will not hide them from their children, telling to the generation to come the praises of the Lord. It is so critically important. And when I was at that Lord Atlantic University and I was talking to these kids as if, you know, they were in my Sunday school class or they were sitting with me on Saturday morning on Shabbat studying the, the Torah. I spoke to these kids and you could see the look on their face faces and you could see their hearts were tender to hear this and you could tell that they were longing to hear these truths because ladies and gentlemen our children know lies they know when something's not right they know when people are not being honest with them but if they don't have the facts they can't respond even if they decide not to verbally communicate or respond they don't we don't teach these things to our children. They're not going to be equipped. They have to know. This is the most important treasure we can give to our children for their future and the, our children's future, for the legacy that we leave behind as parents and grandparents and grandparents. It will be because of our children. But these children, these students at Atlantic University, and they were so inspired and so encouraged to hear that their life, that God has planned for them. He has a destiny for them. But they have to know this word in order to know and to seek him for that destiny. It goes on to say, and his strength and his wonderful works that he has done. So telling to the generation to come the praises of the Lord and his strength and his wonderful works that he has done. This is what encourages us. This is what inspires us. For he, verse 5, where he established a testimony in Jacob. Again, when you read in your Bible the word Jacob, remember, God changed Jacob's name to Israel. So put a flash there, Jacob, Israel, mentally remember, and appointed a law or a, a Torah in Israel, which he commanded our fathers that they should make them known to their children. Again, they are required to teach these truths to their children. They are commanded, we are, which we are, he, which he commanded, God commanded our forefathers that they should make them into our children. These, these truths and this, this 
the scripture, this Bible is so critically important for our children. We wonder why our children are hopeless and feel like, you know, there is no hope and there is no meaning to their life. It's because they don't know this God who created them with a unique destiny so that they would have a testimony so that they could tell others about what God has done in their own life. We should be, you know, as I said earlier, these kids need to know that they didn't just come into the world randomly. They didn't just come into the world for their parents. They were hand by God. And they were each given, even us, we were each given a unique ability to be alive in this generation. We have something to contribute to our society. And that's why it's so important that we teach these things to our children. This is our biblical responsibility. This is what we are supposed to be doing. Verse 6 says, that generation to come, so that that generation to come might know them. The children who would be born, that may arise and declare them to their children. This psalmist was talking yet a future, a future children who is yet to be born. Verse 7, that they may set their hope in God and not forget the works of God, but keep his commandments. I have had so many Christians tell me, we do not have to follow the Torah. We don't have to keep the commandments of God. And here, right here in the Psalms, it says that they may set their hope in God and not forget the works of God, but keep his commandments. Even Yeshua said, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. What commandments was he, te- was he talking about? Yeshua didn't come with a new set of commandments in the New Testament. They were the same commandments that had been written from the foundations of the earth. From the very beginning, that God had declared, they have not changed. And we have to teach these truths to our children. We are commanded. Verse 8, and may not be like their fathers, a stubborn and rebellious generation, a generation that did not set a the right, and those and whose spirit was not faithful to God. The children of Ephraim, being armed and carrying bows, turned back in the day of battle. They did not keep the covenant of God. And ladies and gentlemen, I can tell you we're we're coming to the end of our program, and I want to stop right there because I want to do a teaching next week about who is Ephraim. It's critically important that we understand this. But as I just mentioned, the generation, that generation, a generation that did not set its heart to right, and who still is not faithful to God. We have not. Our generation has not been faithful to teach our children. 1962, when we removed prayer from schools, it's been, we've seen a steady decline in our culture. Now our children are on lockdown. We can't even enter into, as a parent, I can't even enter into my campus, their school, without pushing a button to be able to walk on campus, where at any other time, years ago, I could walk on the school campus in my children's class and bring them lunch if they forgot. But, you know, we all know how our kids have left, left for the God early in the morning and forgot their lunch. But those days are gone. And it's why it's so critically important why we have to go back to the world. We have to make the time to sit down and talk to our children about these truths. Because look at the world that these kids are growing up in. They feel hopeless. They feel like there's no, there's nothing for them. And it's confusing for them. But we have to give them hope. The only way we're going to give them that hope is by bringing them back to the God who loves them, who created them, gave them to us is our responsibility to biblically keep our children and our children's children and their children. I want to go ahead and um, just refresh this and see if we have any questions, comments. Please feel free. That's what we're here for. I'm here to help you to study and to learn 
so that you'll understand what your role is, your biblical responsibility is to not to our Jewish brethren, but even to our children. Um, I also just want to mention to you that next week we will be back in, um, we will be back, I'm actually in Los Angeles next week. I had a full week of meetings and I will be back in um, Franklin at the headquarters um, next Wednesday, but um, for two weeks, the end of March, two, the, um, uh, two Wednesdays, the end of March, we're going to be coming live from Israel. So I'm going to be attending the global forum on anti-Semitism that the Israeli government is putting on. So I'm looking forward to um, to bringing some new information to you. Then. Um, there is, did you know if there's any way to get a year? Okay, very good. Still any more comments. And so I want to just um, thank you all again for, for joining us. I want to remind you, um, we will put this Bible study back up next week on Psalm 78 as we continue to discuss what our biblical responsibility is to our children, to teach them, to train them up. Um, I also just want to remind you that if you have not gone, if you're not on our receiving our emails and our announcements or news newsletters, please go to our website at pjpn.org and sign up to get on the mailing list. I also want to um, also just encourage you, if you haven't, to, to like us on Facebook. I'm so glad that you have tuned in to watch our program and that you're faithful to tune in. Um, also remember, our Focus on Israel shows, are you can watch them on Daystar. Uh, midnight Eastern Time, and Daystar, you have to check your local listings from wherever you can watch. You can pick Daystar up all over the globe. So if you're watching us from another country, um, Daystar is broadcasting into every nation um, around the globe. And so you have, you're listening to see um, what what channel to tune in to watch Daystar. But um, our Focus on Israel show is airing every week, Sunday nights at um, midnight Eastern Time, 11 p.m. Central, and 9 p.m. on Pacific Coast Time. So I hope that you'll tune in and watch this program. That's another way for you to be informed and to be educated and to learn a little bit more about more biblical responsibility to be with our Jewish brethren and defend the state of Israel. And as I said earlier, remember, the way we know truth is by studying God's Word through prayer, meditation, and by the revelation of His Holy Spirit. And I want to thank you all for, for tuning in and being with us. Um, again, you can um, follow us on Twitter and Instagram. Uh, we've also got Vimeo and YouTube. If you want to see some of our videos, there's more programs there that you can watch. Um, we've got all of our past episodes of PJTN online up. But please email us. Um, if you have comments or questions, um, you can email us, email me at comments at pjpn.org, and I'll be happy to answer your questions. We are hearing from people all over the world, from Africa, India, um, South Africa, Australia, New Zealand, um, like I said earlier in the program, the UK, um, and of course, all across the United States of America. And I just want you all to know, it is a tremendous honor that you would take the time to join us this evening, this afternoon, um, and and we just, I just pray the Lord's blessing upon you. I pray for each one of you that God would give you wisdom and that he would give you revelation that you did not have before. The fact that you're here too, then, the fact that you're speaking is a testimony to what God is doing in your life. And it is a tremendous honor to have you as part of our PGATM work. And again, join us at PGATM.org. Sign up, donate, or we're trying to uh, add 5,000 new PGATM watchmen to our base of support, just twenty dollars a month to help us so that we can continue to get this message out and reach more Christians, more Jews, more people of conscience around the globe to stand against age-old hatred. So God bless you, and I look forward to seeing you next week as we tune in. And um, again, thank you for tuning in.
I, again, I'm your host, Lori Carter-Zamore, and thank you for joining us. God bless you.